I just remember praying for the symptoms to go away. And now where I'm at, I'm so grateful for the symptoms that I dealt with because it it was a red flag, right? For my body to be like, hey, something's imbalanced here. You need to wake up. Like we're trying to warn you. So that it was almost like the things I was praying for God to take away was what saved me. Welcome back, everyone. Our guest today is Jenna Collinson, who walks us through her experience with chronic illness. This episode is extremely powerful as we discuss the importance of relentlessly advocating for yourself and health and leaning on your faith when you feel you have nothing left to give. We hope you love this conversation as much as we did. Please share with someone who you think would be inspired by this as well. And a quick reminder, if this is your first time here, to please subscribe over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube, and leave us a review with the part you enjoyed the most from this interview. In just a moment, the one and only Jenna Collinson. Something that has made a world of difference for us and many people we know over this past year has been getting our groceries delivered right to our door. The ability to get local, fresh groceries without us having to step foot into a grocery store has been something we are so grateful for. Convenience, price, and quality are extremely important to us, and that's why we love and support Instacart. Instacart can deliver to your front door in as little as one hour. You can shop multiple stores, see deals in your area to help you save money, and every item is hand-selected by shoppers based on your preferences. To start your 14-day free trial and to get free delivery on your first order over $35, follow the link in the show notes to let Instacart know that we sent you and to help support the show. Instacart, never step foot in a grocery store ever again. And now to today's episode of Ivy Unleashed. We are Gold Ivy, a health company dedicated to simplifying health and wellness. The industry is lacking the honest experience and grit required to overcome the struggle, and we're here to fill that gap. You decide what works for your daily life and how to transform our lessons into your gold. Join us on the fearless pursuit of self-discovery and growth. This is Ivy Unleashed, a Gold Ivy production. Hello, welcome back to Ivy Unleashed. You are here with Brooke, Andrea, and a very special guest. Yes, and this guest, I do have a bone to pick with her because she is a diehard Vikings fan. (laughs) Welcome to Ivy Unleashed, Jenna Collinson. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be on and honored that you guys reached out to me. Yes, and you have a story that personally tugs on my heart, very similar to journey that I've been going through, uh, another medical mystery, spent four years, very similar to me, trying to figure out what was going on and really hone into her faith. And so we have two things in common, our faith and also functional medicine. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And so we want Jenna to share her story with our listeners. It is an incredible story of perseverance, of trust and faith, and it's going to blow you guys' mind. Yeah, so Jenna, can you kind of walk us through what the last four years of life has been like for you? Absolutely. Yeah, without giving you guys too much detail, because I feel like I could probably talk for five hours about my journey. I actually told my sister a couple of years ago, I said, I'm going to write a book about this one day because it is quite the movie. So yeah, I guess it probably started four years ago um, is when I first noticed my first symptoms, which were... Fatigue. I was tired all the time. My hair, as girls, I know when we shower, we have hair that kind of comes out, but it was more than normal, but didn't think anything of it. Um, My grandma passed away October of 2017, which was a really stressful time for our family. Fast forward to April 2018, and kind of looking back, this whole chunk of traumatic events, I know, is what kind of pushed me into chronic illness. My mom got super sick April of 2018. Another medical mystery. She was in the hospital for like 10 days, couldn't figure out what was wrong with her. I'm a very highly sensitive empath. So as you can imagine during that time, I was trying to put a brave face on for the family, be there for my mom. All the while on the inside, I was so fearful, extremely anxious. During this time, I was living in fight or flight. 
when I talk about anxiety, it was, it was so bad. Um, my mom, she's good now. They ended up finding out it was just like a staph infection, a pretty bad one, but um, she got out of the hospital. Three days later, we had to put her family dog down. Another <sighs> very special <Shut> up. <laughs> And then that following weekend, my dad had a heart attack. So within like a month's time, just stress, trauma, a lot going on, especially for an empath and a sensitive person like me. So right around that time, actually, I had to go in for my annual physical, told my doctor, you know, the symptoms I was kind of feeling. And she said, I was 27 at the time. And she said, gosh, you're so young, you're healthy, but I'm just going to run, run labs, you know, see what your thyroid's doing. So I was like, okay, left the appointment. I got a voicemail from her a couple of days later. And she said, yep, came back, your thyroid's low. So she diagnosed me hypothyroid, prescribed a medication and said, hey, call me if you have any questions course I had a ton of questions and mind you kind of months before that I had dabbled in kind of the holistic health stuff just for like general health and wellness I was working with the naturopath so at that time called my doctor asked all the questions and she didn't give me any solid answers I didn't feel supported so I said you know what I'm gonna try to do this naturally I'm gonna work with this naturopath I just felt something in me say like you can you can balance this back out naturally so Decided not to take the medication and worked with this naturopath for a few months. She had me on different supplements and I felt like during this period of my life, I spent so much money on different supplements and just working with her because obviously it's not covered by insurance. Yeah, I I felt like I would take one step forward, two steps back throughout my whole healing journey. Um, Wasn't getting any better. So kind of summer, it was June 2018, I actually met with a chiropractor that practice functional medicine. She ran three pages worth of blood work for me. And that's when I found out I was actually dealing with Hashimoto's, which is the autoimmune hypothyroid. So doing my own research, it makes sense. Hashimoto's comes usually after hypothyroid or before hypothyroid. So I worked with her and I decided, you know what, I have nothing to lose. I'm going to go all in on this. Took myself off birth control. I had been on it for 10 plus years, which is terrible. She put me on a healing protocol that included the autoimmune paleo diet, which if you're familiar with the paleo diet, like dairy free, gluten free, you know, all those types of things. But the autoimmune version is extremely restrictive. My foods I could eat the list was like this long, the foods I couldn't eat was like two pages. So mind you, I'm dealing again with this like fight or flight state of being. I'm highly anxious, highly stressed. I have this new diagnosis. I'm like fearful. I wasn't very, I was in a good place in my faith at that time. I was just all over the place and going on that diet. It was looking back probably one of the darkest times in my healing journey. I felt alone. I felt isolated. Food is such a social thing. Family gatherings. I had to bring my own food. It was just a really dark time. Um, that diet did wonders for my inflammation though. Um, looking back, probably the only good thing it did, not good on uh, mental health wise. But then, yeah, after that, I just, my husband now proposed kind of in that time too. So I just had a lot going on. So I decided to kind of take a break. I was like, you know what? I'm, I just need to take a break from all supplements, working with people, need to focus on planning this wedding and just like calming down. But mind you, throughout this whole time, I'm doing my own research. As anyone probably knows in this chronic health space, you have to be your own advocate. So I read all the books. Um, I read a book called um, The Root Cause Effect, I think it's called. The doctor that wrote the book had Hashimoto's and she kind of walked through the different root causes that could cause you to have Hashimoto's. So one of them ended up being dental work, silver fillings. And I was like, no way you like, you've got to be kidding me. I have two silver fillings. So I started down the journey of like functional holistic dentistry work after that. I met with, a, if anyone's local to Minnesota, he is in St. Paul. He is a biological dentist. He safely removes silver fillings. So I had that done. A biological um, dentist. That's a thing. Biological <laughs> dentist. Yeah. 
Yep. So he, in, if, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, I have, I'm dealing with chronic illness and I have like silver fillings or dental work. I highly, highly, highly encourage you to find a biological dentist. If you're thinking about getting any silver fillings removed, if they're not trained properly, it, it can be very terrible for you. Like if you ingest any of the silver filling, you can heavy metals, right? It's a heavy metal. So if you ingest that your body is just going to basically shut down. So find a dentist that's going to safely remove those things for you. But it was talking with him that he said, I told him my story and he said, have you ever had your wisdom teeth taken out or any root canals? And I was like, yeah, who hasn't? <laughs> I've, I've had one root canal in all four wisdom teeth. He, he said, interesting. I have this, it's a 3D cone beam scan. So essentially it takes a 3D scan of your mouth to pick up any underlying infections that you might have. And he basically explained how obviously your mouth is connected to your whole body and each tooth is actually connected to meridian lines and they, each tooth is connected to different organs in the body. And I was like, like mind blown. I haven't even thought of this. this yeah. Insane. I had no idea. So I, I was like, you know, again, I'm all in, let's cross these things off the list. So he did the scan, of course, all four wisdom T sites came back that I had an infection there. Um, and the root canal tooth, there was an infection there as well. So I had cavitation surgery, which is basically them going in and cleaning out the site where it's infected. And then, yeah, he, he, well, the wisdom teeth, I didn't have any teeth there. So he just made an incision, went in, cleaned it out, and then stitched me back up. So that kind of happened um, winter of 2018 um, and into January. Still wasn't feeling better. I was just the fatigue was so terrible. I couldn't get out of bed in the morning. So I said, you know what? I've given myself six months to try to do this naturally. I think I need to go see a doctor and like get on medication. So I went and found a doctor, put me on medication and still really didn't feel much better. Um, but I decided, you know, it was leading up to my wedding. I'm just going to focus on that. Got married um, June 2019, and then kind of the rest of that year was just, again, doing things on my own, still on supplements. I would do different protocols on my own, kind of doing my own research, reading about parasites. I'm like, okay, checked all the boxes for that. I probably have parasites, so I ordered a parasite cleanse and did that on my own. Um, I was doing like candida cleanses and all these different things. Fast forward to 2020, obviously we all know what happened. <laughs> Country lockdown, stress was still at an all-time high. I, I guess I didn't, I didn't mention that too, though. Kind of throughout that, I'm growing in my faith. I went back to church. Um, I got rebaptized early 2019 with my sister. And I just I felt like I needed community. So I joined a small group through my church, which was game changer. So helpful to have that, that support people that will listen to you and pray for you and just rally around you when you're struggling. So yeah, 2020, again, just kind of stayed at home. I did start to have insane, like insane bloating spring of 2020. I kind of had it before, but I'm like, this doesn't feel right. So I ended up finding this doctor and she had me do a breath test. So it's like testing like the methane in your breath for SIBO, which is small intestinal <laughs> You're just like, yep. I'm like, am yep. I looking in a mirror right now? <laughs> I know. I keep looking at Brooke like, you have done all of these same steps and it sounds very familiar. Mm -hmm. Oh, so yeah, I did that breath test um, for SIBO, came back positive, did a SIBO protocol. Nothing, none of these like healing detox protocols I went on, it, it didn't give me relief. So yeah, I just kind of went on throughout 2020 and um, fast forward to October 6, 2020. I like to call it my rock bottom and I journaled throughout all this time so I can look back and kind of reference back to this. It was a beautiful fall day here in Minnesota. I was feeling really anxious. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to get in the car, drive to a park and, and just go for a walk. So I... Yeah, started out on this walk and started like uncontrollably sobbing. It wasn't even like one little tear started. I just started like sobbing. And I, in that moment, 
physically threw my hands up in the air and I said, God, I can't do this on my own anymore. Like these past four years, I have been grasping at anything and anything, trying to heal myself, thinking that I had the power to do that. And I, I was playing God, essentially trying to heal myself. And it was in that moment that I was like, I, I surrender my health to you. I surrender my life to you. It's not on my own power, but yours. And, and it wasn't just me saying that it was like my heart posture in that moment. I was, I felt like at a point where I was ready to, to surrender. Yeah. That's the, the next day I was on Instagram and I came across of all places. <laughs> I came across my now practitioner People can say it was a coincidence. I say it was God. Um, she only had a couple thousand followers at the time. She now has 20,000 followers. Yeah, just kind of look through her page. I just felt like the Holy Spirit was leading me, you know, to, to look into what she does. And I saw that she and another girl had started this program for women dealing with chronic illness called Root Cause Formula. And they were just about to start their first group. And they were taking applications for their, their second group of women. So I was like, gosh, I'm really intrigued by this. This sounds like this community, like this sounds right up my alley. Um, and I had been at a point where I wasn't doing stuff for a while and I was ready to kind of jump back into healing. So I saw her partner had a, an option to do like a free discovery call. So I'm like, I'm just going to sign up for that and hear more about this program. So we had the call and kind of explain my story to her and I'll never forget it. She was like, Jenna, you know, the application deadline is, I think she said it was tomorrow. She said, I think you'd be a really great fit for this program. I can tell you're eager to heal, to, you know, just get started. She said, submit your application. She said, we like to, you know, be fair and take, you know, the people that signed up earlier, but she said, I'm going to push your application to the front. Cause I, I can just tell like you're ready got a call the next week or an email the next week saying I was accepted. And I like started the program that December. And again, like looking back, it was all after I surrendered it to God and I, I wasn't searching for anything. It like fell in my lap. So yeah, I started root cause formula, which looking back and I'm still a part of it um, right now. I'm still working through healing, but it was the missing piece to my puzzle. Like everything that they do and help people with is everything that I was trying to do on my own, but in the wrong order. Um, Emily is one of the practitioners and she has a specific roadmap that she follows for healing. And it just, it just made sense. Like I said, I would do a parasite protocol, nothing worked. I would do a candida protocol. And it didn't work because I wasn't addressing things in the right order. So yeah, I had my first one-on-one. -on -one. She, she does functional blood work. So you get bl labs drawn. So she looks over that from a functional medicine standpoint. If you've never had that done, I highly encourage it. Um, I went to LabCorp and they give you like the reference ranges of like what's optimal. And I think I had like two things out of range uh, based off of their ranges. Uh, Emily's ranges, I think I had like 24 things that were out of range. It's like, okay, no wonder why I've been feeling like crap this whole time. And why so many people, if you're dealing with chronic illness, I feel for you because so many doctors will look at your labs and be like, Oh, it's all good. While you're sitting there feeling like crap. So that was really helpful to, to see that. And then she did um, muscle or energy testing. And what she came up with was I had parasites, not to my surprise, viruses, heavy metals, mold, and the emotions that came up were the, it was the emotion of unworthiness, which was pretty intense to hear that. And it just kind of made, made all the sense. So yeah, started a healing protocol and I've kind of been doing different things monthly since then. Um, and like I said, still working with them. I'm currently going after like deep rooted heavy metals. So that's kind of a story and in, in a, a kind of condensed <laughs> form, but <laughs> yeah. Thank you for yeah. walking us through all that. I, I think watching Brooke go through this and it's almost like it doesn't do it justice when you explain it because mm -hmm. it's such a long time to feel mm -hmm. anxious about your health. It's such a long time to come to multiple social events and just dreading it, dreading the questions or dreading being unable to fit in. And there's just so like, 
to hear someone sum it up so short just does it such a disservice because like you said, you're researching on your own, you're feeling like crap, you're advocating for yourself Mm -hmm. when you don't even have energy to do what you need to do to survive, let alone Mm -hmm. the money, the money. Oh my gosh. Like everything you're talking about, like this dentist too. And like, it's just so interesting to think about this journey. Like I'll talk to clients that say, yeah, I'm going to go, my gut's been off. I'm going to go to my doctor and talk to him about it. I'm like, oh Uh, man. Oh man. Let me say a quick prayer for you. Cause (laughs) I'm like, okay. All right. Listen up. I'm going to need you to journal. I'm going to need you to do a food diary. You're not going to want to, but it's going to help you. You're going to need to journal your experience. You're going to need to keep advocating for yourself. And I'm like, I have to put that filter on when I talk to my clients of like, okay, relax. Like, cause I just, it's, it's so much. And the gap of care, the divide between Western and Eastern medicine, don't even get me started. It's, it, it should all be one big thing and it's not. And it's so sad to get blood work done and for a doctor to say, no, you're good. And then you have that same blood work done by a functional doc who actually goes deep in and doesn't look at just the mm-hmm. ideal ranges. They look at, you know, what, what's actually causing what, and that they have this knowledge that it's, it's mind blowing. But what I'm, what I'm curious of, just, I don't want to skip over this because I'm sure people listening, myself included, you said energy and magnet work. And you said this feeling, this emotion that came up of unworthiness. What was that? (laughs) How did that, how was that discovered? Yes. Yes. People can call it like muscle testing. Have you ever heard of that? Where somebody can like physically muscle test you so she does it virtually and it, it's a gift from God. Like so many people ask her, how are you able to test somebody through a computer? She, it's literally a gift from God, but one of the, she has these um, vials that are energetically charged to anything and everything. Everything has a, has a charge. The word love has a charge. The word hate has a charge. Parasites has a specific charge. So she, she doesn't use them anymore, but she has different vials that are energetically charged. So she'll test. And I think she does the sway test, like swaying forward is yes. Swaying backwards is no. So she, part of the protocols, like working on your emotional health, if you're dealing with chronic illness, you cannot heal unless you deal with your, your mind and emotions. So that's like a big part of their program is mindset. So I think she just went through the um, files that she had to see what emotions I resonated with and the feeling of unworthiness came up for me. And she, through her energy testing, was able to pinpoint that it was generational. It was passed, that emotion was passed down to me through birth from my dad. Mic drop. Like I, in that moment, I, I got super emotional. I started crying and she said, what? what are these emotions that are coming up for you? I said, honestly, it's feelings of relief. Almost Um, my whole life. I just struggled with self-esteem issues and not feeling worthy. And, you know, I was a people pleaser and like all those types of things. And it just made me feel validated in the fact that it wasn't my fault. Like I couldn't, I couldn't help it. It was something that was passed down to me. And anyone that wants to go down that rabbit hole, there's so much research around like generational trauma that can be passed down. And it is, it is a real thing. So, so yeah, she tested me energetically and that's what came up for me. So how do you, okay. I have a question for both of you with functional medicine. First of all, we haven't really explained exactly what it is. I mean, from what you're both saying, you can probably guess that, you know, they test for more things. It's getting to the root cause. Right. So when you look at Western medicine, it's very much, we're going to treat the symptoms. We're going to treat the pain, but what's actually causing this issue? Let's get it from the root issue so that we don't have to just put a bandaid on it. Okay. And then also just to speed up for other people going through this, instead of, like you said, doing these random protocols you hear of, and you know, they can be healing, you know, where do people find a functional med doc? Like, where do you go? Instagram. (laughs) I mean, that's where you guys have gone. Like, is that what you would suggest? 
So, you know, something yeah. that stands out to me, Jenna, when you tell your story about surrendering and saying, I, I can't do it. I can't, I don't want to do it anymore. I physically can't do it anymore. I'm putting the control in your hands. I think something I found in my journey too is this divine timing, right? Who I met at what points and what I learned along the way set me up perfectly to meet who I was meant to, to meet, right? If I didn't yeah. go through all of this, I wouldn't ha- be speaking to you right now. I wouldn't be here. And so as frustrating as it is that I had to go through all these things, and Jen, I'm sure you can relate too, it's, mm-hmm. it's this idea of not pushing it and controlling everything. And that also goes into that emotional piece of letting people help yeah. you, letting it fall into place. But I think advocating for yourself and not stopping is huge. For mm-hmm. me, it came to the point of, how much is my health worth? You know, I would I would have these moments of I'm so broke and I'm in so much pain. Okay, well, I'm already broke, so I might as well focus on feeling better. And then I'm doing all this stuff that's costing me money and I'm just getting in even more debt. And so it's like this vicious cycle of oh, like one would get a little too high yeah. and then I'd be like, oh, I feel like crap, let's bump it up. And so it's, I think yeah. what I'm trying to get at is your health is there is no limit of money that you can put on it. You will always figure it out, but you're worth feeling good. And that's what I came to terms with is I need people to help me. I can't do this on my own. I'm already spending so much money to do it on my own. And through mm-hmm. reaching out to people, through being vulnerable in my story, it allowed the people to find me almost. Mm-hmm. Kind of similar. Oh, yeah, you were speaking everything that I've thought in the past with the money piece. Oh my gosh. I remember it was last year. I remember sitting there being like, Oh my gosh, what have I been doing? Why did I do this? Why did I do that? But it's like, I stopped myself because that was totally the enemy attacking me. I said, no, I worked with each. I mean, I've worked with so many different people. I've worked with each of them for a specific reason. And I've learned something new from each of them. So I can't discredit the first person I worked with that I was spending all this money on supplements. Like I learned something along the way, you know, from each of them. And your point of like, everything happens at the exact right time is so true. I remember my prayer before surrendering to God used to be like through tears, I would be on my knees in my bedroom asking and begging and pleading God to take my symptoms away. The hair loss was one of like the worst things for me as a female watching your hair thin. It was really bad for the mental health. And I just remember being like, and almost I would like negotiate with him and be like, God, if you you just please stop my hair from thinning, like I'll do X, Y, and Z. And I just remember praying for the symptoms to go away. And now where I'm at, I'm so grateful for the symptoms that I dealt with because it, it was a red flag, right? For my body to be like, Hey, something's imbalanced here. You need to wake up. Like we're trying to warn you. So that it was almost like the things I was praying for God to take away was what saved me from going even deeper, further into chronic illness. I mean, where I was able to stop it and get the help that I needed. So yeah, it's just so cool to see the shift in mindset, I guess, of like being bitter and, you know, playing the victim mentality of why me to be in like look where I'm at now. Like I have this purpose in life where I, you know, hopefully I'm going to start my own practice where I can help people. And I would have never gotten there before if I didn't walk through all of this. So I can totally relate to you, Brooke. Yeah. And what I'm wondering, because you were, we have very similar situations, but I feel like you're a little bit farther along. And so for you to get this mindset shift, I'm wondering what, what that looked like for you, right? Was it this daily ongoing practice of just correcting the thoughts that you're having and redirecting those thoughts or, you know, cause you kind of are on the other side of it now where you are feeling good, you are seeing progress Mm -hmm. and I'm still kind of in the mud. And so what did that look like? And for anyone who's struggling, talk us through that mindset shift for you. Yeah. The mindset piece, the physical wins that I've had are amazing. I'm so happy. I have energy back. My hair isn't falling out. I'm not constipated anymore. Like all those things are, I am so grateful for, but the shift in my mindset is 
I don't want to get emotional, but a game changer. Like I went from, like I said, living in fight or flight, crippling anxiety and fear. Like I growing up was around, I, I had a, experienced a lot of death in my life and through therapy and all of that have learned, I took on death anxiety. Like I feared dying, which so funny that, you know, this fear manifested into chronic illness. I think it was God's way of being like, Hey, you need to like turn this around. Otherwise, you know, your thoughts turn into your reality. So yeah, it was a lot of work. Um, like I said, root cause formula focused so much on mindset, which again was the missing piece for me in my healing journey. I never addressed that. It was all supplements and detox therapies and all of that. So what I did was daily journaling um, that really helped praying, continuing to grow. I, I went from being like a lukewarm Christian to like all in focusing on my personal relationship with Christ reading scripture, going to church, joining that small group, all those types of things. But I also went through therapy, talk therapy, that which was really helpful too. Learned a lot about family dynamics and setting boundaries. Um, I've always been, like I said, a people pleaser, like a type A personality, kind of perfectionist, which all the people I've kind of met in this journey of mine, everyone dealing, not everyone, majority of people dealing with chronic illness have that same type of personality, which is kind of interesting. Can't relate. So yeah, I did, yeah. <laughs> I did therapy. And then I also actually did neurofeedback, which I felt like I was struggling. I tried to explain it to my sister. I felt like I would, I, I knew all the things to do, right? I, I had a negative thought come in. I knew to like replace that with something positive, but it was almost like there was a misfire in my brain where I would have this negative thought, try to retract it and say something positive, but my mind would go to like worst case scenario every single time. And I was just like in bondage to these negative thoughts. So I did neurofeedback, which essentially is, it's, it's a type of therapy. So I would go in and she would connect these like electrodes to my head, or my brain. And I basically sat there and watched Netflix and through her program, she was able to, it's basically rewiring your brain because my, my brain always wanted to go to worst case scenario, fear, anxiety, like that was the route my brain wanted to go down. So it helped me kind of redirect my brain in a, in a way it was, it's kind of weird, but I know it worked because I would go in there feeling anxious. She would do her little magic on the machine. And I just felt like. Zen. I remember turning to her. I was like, do people, do normal people feel like this all the time? <laughs> like this is crazy. <laughs> so I did that. Yeah. I think it was just continued surrender to, you know, just, and also giving yourself grace because you are going to have terrible, crappy, shitty days. Like I don't want to sugarcoat chronic illness because there are some really, really hard times. But I think in those times, giving yourself grace and just going back to the basics, if you're having a hard time with Kirk's reaction from detoxing, you know, go back to the basics, drink water, rest, eat nourishing foods, you know, just slow down, maybe stop taking your supplements for that day. So I think, yeah, I used to kind of be that all or nothing mentality. And I've learned to kind of find that middle ground. Yeah, I'm having this. It's to me, it's so interesting because you have done so many things, like more things than we were even aware of to get yourself to a place where you can function and you can feel good. And it's this balance, though, I keep thinking of, OK, surrender. Yes. But also you're like fighting for your life. You know, you're you don't want to feel anxious. You don't want to be going to these worst case scenarios. You're aware that you think of death a lot and you're afraid of it. So it's almost like. Yes, you're surrendering, but yes, you're fighting tooth and nail for your health. And so how do you find that balance of when you need to surrender and take the rest day versus when you need to go hard and do some neural feedback or find a biological dentist? Like, how do you find that balance of <laughs> when to take charge and when to surrender? That's a really good question. And I honestly don't have a good answer. I think everyone is on their own what I've learned is everyone is bio individually different. Although Brooke and I are going through very similar things, God had us, has us on our own journeys. And 
the people you've met, Brooke, the people I've met were on purpose. Like it was meant to happen. And, you know, I think just doing my own research, I've kind of, it, it can be really overwhelming. And that's where I think I struggled is I read all of these things and I wanted to do them all neurofeedback therapy, but it's like, okay, at some point you have to like take a step back and just like evaluate a your finances, but also something that I've kind of learned throughout my process is trying to like hear God's voice. Like what way am I feeling nudged? I felt nudged to go to therapy and, and talk to somebody. Everything else I feel like was kind of trial and error though, along the way, to be honest, I, like I said, did so many different things. Were some of them necessary? Maybe, maybe not, you know, but it all led me to where I'm at now. So yeah, it, it, it's such a, it's a hard balance because you want to do all the things. That's why I think working with a practitioner that will listen to you and like understand the one that I'm working with now, her whole thing is a, everything is figure outable. So stop stressing, like, we'll figure this out. But also I knew I was meant to work with her because she said the supplements that you're on are supposed to be one and done. Mm -hmm. The people I worked with before had me on supplement after, and there was like no end in sight. You know, she said, you're on this protocol. They're supposed to do their job and you're supposed to be done with them. So it, it helped me kind of, okay, I can see the end goal here. It's not going to be forever. So I think finding somebody that will, listen to you. And I, I don't want to say be in it to take your money, but be, you know, cognizant of your, your finances and kind of where you're at and what you're willing to spend and work with you on that. Yeah, I totally can echo that. And, you know, the practitioner I'm working with is similar in the sense of uh, my goal is to not work with you, <laughs> right? Like our goal is to get your body working the way that it should. You shouldn't be on medication for life. You shouldn't have these sensitivities and these allergies. Like your body mm -hmm. is beautifully crafted and structured to work in your favor. It shouldn't be fighting against you. There's something off that's causing this and let's figure it out and let's fix it. Ed has me on five supplements at a time you know, or like new at a time so that I can afford it, that it isn't all at once, even though they're, they're adding up. <laughs> But yeah. five new ones at a time so that it is easily digestible, no pun intended. Uh, <laughs> and that, you know, because it, it's so mental, the not feeling good on top of all of these things that you're trying to juggle. And I love what you said about community and the small group. I think it's important whether you have a chronic illness or not is to not do this alone. And that's the thing that's probably helped me the most is being vulnerable, asking for help, mm -hmm. And knowing that it's okay. Like, this is what being normal is about, is leaning on these people. And so I'm curious what that process has looked like for you of asking for help, of being vulnerable in this journey. Is it something that you always were okay with? Or as you kind of started to get these symptoms, how did you let the people in around you to help? Yeah, that's a really good question. I um, have always struggled asking for help. But I, I knew I didn't have an option. I mean, I, I could have easily taken that levothyroxine and just been like, hey, this is my destiny, whatever. I'll be on this medication forever. But I kid you not. And I, I talked to my mom and sister about this. I, they both said like, you're so strong. You're so resilient. And gosh, if I was in your shoes, I wouldn't have done all that. I, and I explained to them that it was literally something inside of me. And I know it was the Holy Spirit saying you will get better. Keep searching for answers. Like don't stop And that hearing that all the time, just helped me to feel encouraged to ask for help because I knew help was out there. And I knew I was going to, in my mind, I knew eventually I would get better and not have to be on these medications forever. I just internally felt that I, I was destined to fully heal and then be able to help others heal. So yeah, I would say it was kind of Holy Spirit driven, um, encouraging me to just reach out and ask for help. And like I said, the right people just kind of fell in my lap too. Yeah. When you're open to receiving that help, they come in. Mm -hmm. It's when we focus on the help, then the help comes. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm going to do this mm -hmm. all by myself. It's yeah. been my experience. What's hard too as a coach 
you know, when you don't want to play religion into, you know, our coaching is not religious coaching. It's not faith-based coaching. You can talk about your faith Mm -hmm. and we can talk about ours in it, but we don't push it on anyone. But it is tough sometimes when people do feel so alone, because I just want to say like, you're never alone. You are not in this on your own. And I do think there is something about the surrendering where, you know, in my darkest times in my life, I've said the same thing. Like, I cannot do this alone. I, I can't, I cannot do this. I am not capable of this. And at the giving up and the surrendering, I can just feel it. And when you're talking about it, that you do have something with you at all times, whether you believe it's the universe or whatever you want to call it, it can help you. If there's even a small part of you that has faith, just lean into it a bit. See if it can help you. See if someone you know that has a little bit stronger of a faith or goes to church or has some type of spirituality in them, just ask them about it because it can move mountains. It can get you to take the next step. It can help you get out of bed. It can... Whatever it is that you need, the mm-hmm. surrendering sometimes is like, I got nothing. <laughs> I need, just need some help. Mm-hmm. I can't do this on my yeah. own. So true. Yeah. I just I mean, looking back on my journey, the, when I started having wins and like all these positive things happening, happening for me, it was, I know I sound like a broken record, but like all Jesus, it was all my faith. And I just, yeah, I I know I've been, I've walked through the, this path in life for a reason and I'm still trying to figure that all out right now, but I am feeling led to help others, you know, to not have to go through everything I went through of working with 15 different practitioners and doing all these things that maybe, like I said, wasn't necessary. And I just, something in me just really wants to help people. And in the whole faith piece too, I just, if I can help one person, then I'm, I'm winning. So. Mm -hmm. Well, and I just want to encourage you both that, you know, I think sometimes when you think about helping people, I'm sure it's like, what piece of the puzzle do I tell them? Because there's so many pieces, but I think (laughs) just you two being vulnerable and sharing anything, is beneficial for people to hear, whether they have chronic illness or not. You know, everybody has some type of struggle that they're going through. Mm -hmm. And the tenacity that you guys have had to have, perseverance, I mean, it's unbelievable. And something I keep thinking about with both of you is this financial piece and the anxiety piece. Because anxiety and the stress of anxiety on your body manifests with so many in so many different ways with these symptoms, right? And so it's like you're probably trying to get rid of a parasite, but then you have this anxiety that's affecting your body in different ways. Maybe you get migraines, maybe it's fatigue, maybe it's whatever. And so I am so happy that, you know, you mentioned the emotional piece and the therapy piece to go along with this, but along with anything you're adding in to help with it costs more money, which adds more stress and anxiety. And so I'm curious to hear from you, Jenna, how, how you navigate anxiety before you noticed all of these symptoms, like, did you have anxiety before how it was in the midst of it and how it is now and how you kind of navigate that Avenue? Yeah. Oh my gosh. I preparing for this podcast was going through my journal and my anxiety used to be so bad. Like I remember, I think it was the year my grandma passed, but earlier on in that year, the spring of that year, I like I told you guys was living in fight or flight. So what does that mean? Like you're living with adrenaline 24 seven, which is absolutely terrible for your body and your health. I remember, and I used to live on Google doctor. I would Google everything, which is do not, do not do that. (laughs) I remember one day I was working and I, my muscles were twitching so bad in my legs. I'm like, what the, and I told you I had death anxiety, like all of this. So I'm like, God, what is happening? So I hopped on Mr. Google and typed it in. And the first thing that popped up was ALS. I'm like, (laughs) went into like full blown panic mode. I called my mom. I was crying. And that's how bad it was. Like crippling fear and anxiety. I, I don't have any secret to prior to me, like addressing root causes, what really helped. Again, my faith really did. 
but a lot of these physical root causes like parasites, heavy metals, all of those things can cause anxiety. So it's kind of that like catch 22 of like, okay, I have these physical stressors inside my body, which are throwing everything out of whack and causing anxiety. So I do think it's important to address those root causes, but again, maybe finding someone that knows the, the order to address those things. So you're not making it worse for you. Finding somebody that'll listen, whether it's a therapist or a friend or family member, you know, family members and friends are free. If you are a Christian, reach out to your church. They usually have mentors or free therapy you can do or join a small group. I, I just can't emphasize that enough. Just having people rally around you, lift you up, pray for you. Yeah. And then simple things. I mean, things that I took for granted before that I really never knew how healing it could be getting outside daily in sunshine. Like that is so good for your health, your immune system, laughing, mm -hmm. like laughter is one of the best things you can do for your health. Laugh. If you don't have friends and family to get together with, put on a funny YouTube video, like laughing daily is so good nourishing your body with good whole foods. Like I know you don't really associate mental health with nutrition, but there's a huge, huge factor there. Just moving your body. If you're feeling like I was in that fight or flight, highly suggest like stopping working out and just going for walks outside. Your body does not need the stress of, of a hard workout on top of that. Yeah, I don't know. Those are just some small tips that I guess I could give. Drinking good water, clean water, getting good sleep, all those types of things are so, so helpful when you're feeling anxious. Yeah, it's really about getting back to the basics is what I'm hearing mm -hmm. and what I'm experiencing. But also all of those ideas, not only are they wonderful, so thank you for sharing, but it also is just proof that there's so many different things you can do to help yourself to support yourself in feeling better. I think one of the biggest things that's keeping me going is knowing that we were meant to feel good, right? These symptoms are signals telling us, hey, something's wrong. We're not supposed to be experiencing anxiety, depression, chronic stress on the body, migraines, like all of these are not normal. And that there are things that you can do and having that faith that you can figure it out. Other people have figured it out. Why the hell can't you? is what I am telling myself. So for anyone out there who is struggling, I just want to say that everything, what Jenna said, her practitioner is so right. Everything is figure outable. It's about asking for help, finding the right people, reaching out to people to help you find the right people. Right. And I keep thinking too, that you might know someone that deals with something that's chronic and sharing this podcast with them because it may feel uncomfortable to shoot us a message don't feel uncomfortable. Like if you want to know who Brooke's working with or who Jenna's working with, or ask them a question about something that feels really weird or random, like Brooke and Jenna and me live for this shit. They <laughs> want to help you. They want to help direct you. If you need direction, if you need a tip, if you want to know something they said that you don't understand what it means or a type, the type of dentist or this brain work, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. there's so much out there. And I think sometimes having someone that's touched it, that could explain it in a way that you could understand without having to look at a, a research right. journal online. I feel like send us a message, send Jenna a message, follow yeah. us and, you know, see what tips we're getting out there, but feel free also to interact with us. We have a lot of people that are messaging us, mm -hmm. but I feel like there's more out there that might just have questions. They might feel like are dumb. Like there's no dumb question when it comes to your health period. Seriously. Yeah. Feel free to reach out. I love, like Brooke said, I'm so passionate about this and would love to just chat with you and, and help you out. So my DMs are always open. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sure everyone's wondering, us included, where are you now? What does your health look like now? What are you currently focusing on? Do you feel like 90% healed or kind of what's the status of your health now? the mindset piece, literally the crippling fear to, I have no fear or anxiety at all. Like I was, I started crying the other day. Cause I'm like, I don't worry about anything. I'm not afraid to die anymore. Like, like I used to be, I'm like in, in scripture says that it's that peace that surpasses all understanding. And I feel like I have finally, finally gotten to that place of like surrender where I can feel that peace. I would say I'm probably 90% 
healed, working on heavy metals right now. Still, my hormones are still out of whack, which I went off the birth control. Like I said, I was on it for like 10 plus years, which is not good. My period was so messed up for, I mean, it still is, but I I would go months without getting it. It's been pretty consistent this year, but it's like 40 some days still, which is not a normal period. Um, So still trying to figure out the, the hormone piece, but chatting with my practitioner, she said, she said, I think once we clear the heavy metals out, it's going to put your thyroid back in balance. It's going to balance out your hormones. So yeah, just feeling really hopeful for that. Hair is not falling out like it used to. Like I said, I used to be constipated. I go two times a day easily now on my own, which is like, if you've never (laughs) dealt with that, praise Jesus. Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. I, I think other symptoms or I don't know. I just, I feel good right now. I feel like I chatted with my practitioner last month and she said, like, I can tell you're when she muscle tested me, she's like, I can tell you are like in a really good place right now. Not a lot is coming up for you. I'm like, yes, finally. So just to encourage anyone that maybe just starting out on your healing journey, like I won't sugarcoat it. It sucks, but it is so worth it to be that advocate for yourself on those hard days, like just continue to put one foot in front of the other. If you need to cry, cry it out. And if you just need somebody to vent to seriously reach out to me. Um, if I can't answer a question, I can redirect you to someone that, you know, a practice, I know so many practitioners now that kind of practice in this root cause healing. So can I always um, reference you to one of them, but just know you're not alone. There's so many people out there that so many people out there that are struggling. And again, everything is figure outable. So just continue to tell yourself that and it will get better. You heard me talk about my insane death, anxiety, fear. Like I don't have any of that anymore. So just let that be an encouragement to you that I I can't give you a specific timeline again, because everyone's on their own specific journey and we're all bio, bio individually different, but you will get there. So just remind yourself that on the hard days. Thank you for saying that because I think when you're in that dark space, that's what you need to hear. It's Mm -hmm. like, it will get better. Lean on your people. Take it moment by moment. Just those words are powerful sometimes. And I'm so glad that you've offered to be a resource for people. So if people do want to reach out to you, how can they find you? Yeah, you can find me at, um, on Instagram at Jenna M. Collinson. If you go to my Instagram page, you'll be able to see any updates that I have. I am currently in the works of trying to work out the kinks of starting my own practice. Um, This year, I went back to school. I became certified as an integrative health practitioner, took some functional blood chemistry courses. So I'm still trying to figure out what it's going to look like exactly. Um, But I'm definitely going to take everything that I've learned over the past few years and kind of lump it all into a program or a place where I can just help people heal and feel better. So yeah, you can head over there and I'm hoping to have it launched by the new year. So you can head over there in the meantime and shoot me a message if you want. Yeah, I would love to connect. Yeah, that's super exciting. We'll plug everything too in our show notes so people can see how you spell your name and just click on the link to find you. So thanks for sharing that. Yes, so exciting. And thank you for sharing everything. You know, I mean, selfishly, I'm just loving it over here. (laughs) Guy, you know, it's, it's not easy. It is moment by moment, hour by hour. And so just to hear someone give you some motivation, no matter what you're going through, to be a light, to say, hey, I've been there. And you can get to the other side of it. It is possible. It's really empowering to hear. So I just want to thank you for being you, for being vulnerable, sharing your story. It's been amazing. And we're so grateful for you. Yes. And I also want to encourage you to, again, that it's really cool that you've journaled so much, Jenna, and that Mm -hmm. you've recorded yourself Mm -hmm. so that you can look back, you know, and Mm -hmm. as I can see you both being these like healing people for others as coaches, you know, you're both certified coaches too, that you have documented the process of this, which is so cool. Some people get through it. And then when they're a few years out, it doesn't feel like it was that like Mm -hmm. long journey. And I'm so happy that you both have done that. So you can look back and really be able to relate to the people that you're coaching 
I think it's going to be a huge gift for them and for yourselves to remember how hard it was. Yeah. I think it's been a huge, huge tool it, just to get it out. Mm-hmm. You know, I heard something the other day that said, your, your mind is not a notepad. And I'm like, yep, get this shit out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not supposed to store it. Like, there's no space up there. Mm-hmm. There's a reason I feel like there's too many tabs open. And so mm-hmm. every morning to make that a practice and just looking at it as, okay, here's my clean slate. Anything that's on my mind, get it out. And my handwriting is awful because I'm like half asleep or not feeling well, but we're doing it. And so, yeah, I encourage everyone to journal. Don't keep it up there. Oh, we could talk about this forever. I love everything you guys are saying and I'm ready for some more takeaways, Jenna. So it's time for our three gold stars. Perfect. So the first one I had, and I already touched base on it earlier, is really just no matter where you are in your health journey, if you're dealing with chronic illness or worried about COVID or what have you, just again, get back to the basics. I'm just saying some of these things are so underrated and some things you can do to just boost that immune system in your health, in your mood, sunshine, get out in sunshine. I know up here in Minnesota, it's about to get a little hard to do that. Um, laughter, laughing is the best medicine, community, faith eat whole nutritious foods, all those things. So that would be my number one. Um, Number two, and this is kind of a little plug, but this has been the only constant, constant in my healing journey this past year. I've done so many different supplements, but this has been the constant. And that is if you're a coffee drinker and you're dealing with chronic illness, I'm sure you've had to cut that out at some point point or another because coffee is highly acidic and if you're dealing with anxiety not a good thing with the caffeine but my practitioner um introduced me to king coffee which is coffee that has reshi mushroom spores in it and before you're like absolutely not I'm not drinking something that has mushrooms in it hear me out it does not taste like mushrooms at all it's delicious coffee the healing benefits of this have been amazing for me. Like so many weird things that I didn't even expect have improved for me. Like I used to have these white bumps. You couldn't really see them just like random bumps on the backs of my arms and my legs. One day I woke up and I was just like feeling my arm. I'm like, Oh my gosh, those bumps are gone. So I reached out to Emily and she said, I hear of that from so many people all the time that started to drink King coffee, just random things like that. But the reshi mushroom, without going into great detail, it is known as the immortality mushroom. I know you touched on Eastern medicine, Brooke, but medicinal mushrooms have so much healing power in them. And yeah, if you are interested, um, if you're a coffee drinker and want to switch to something that's going to boost your immune system and benefit your health, again, reach out to me on Instagram. I'd love to send you some samples or, or help you order some. It's good stuff. My 60 year old dad has never drank coffee in his life. And he is now a coffee drinker. <laughs> I'll just throw that out there. <laughs> and then, yeah, number three, I just throughout this whole process, I just really realized our days are numbered in life. And there's so many different things that we can frivolous things that we can like waste our time on. But the one thing I would encourage all of you to do is just invest in the one relationship that is going to last until eternity. And that's with Jesus Christ. So whatever your faith is, I just, wherever you're at in that journey, again, I would love to chat with you or pray for you, but that's, that's just been like the one thing in my whole journey that has got me to where I am now and the success that I've had. So so yeah, just invest time um, in in that relationship. It'll never steer you in the wrong direction. Those are beautiful. Mm-hmm. All right, unleashing Ivy. Are you ready, Jenna? These are our rapid fire questions. I'm ready. Okay. So <laughs> when you're struggling with a new symptom or in a low moment, whether it be physical or mental, what's one thing that steers you in a positive direction? Gosh, too many days of struggling with physical symptoms, especially during detox protocols. Um, So some things that I would do is I would stop all my supplements or what I was supposed to be doing that day. 
and get back to the basics. I would hydrate, I would rest, fuel my body with good nutritious foods, get off social media. That just, I just feel like when you're dealing with chronic illness, you can go down that comparison trap, which is comparison is the, the thief of joy. Um, so get off social media. I would up my binders. So for people don't, that don't know what that is, it's a supplement that helps if you're doing like a detox protocol, a binder is something that goes in and mops everything up that may have died off so you can excrete it. Um, so I would up my binders, listen to worship music. I would kind of have this mantra that I would say to myself. Um, I would say like, I'm grateful for these symptoms. This too shall pass. I'm grateful that my body is healing. Um, Cause those Herx reactions are not fun, but it's almost like you got to look at it from a positive standpoint of my body's doing what it's supposed to, to get rid of this stuff. And then just lots of prayer. That's awesome. Yeah. All right. Next question. Curious to hear what you're looking forward to most in the next five years of your life. Oh, that is, that's a tricky question. Um, I think chronic illness has taught me to live in the present moment. I know a lot of the anxiety I dealt with was future living, thinking about the what ifs in the future. So I've been trying to ground myself in kind of the present moment. Obviously, you still have to somewhat plan for your future, which I don't know. I My prayer lately has just been like, God, I've walked through this chronic illness junk. Like use me for your glory to help other people. Um, not my will, but yours be done. So that's just kind of been my prayer and to watch him open up these doors, meeting people and now potentially starting my own practice is super exciting. So I'm looking forward to that. And we can't wait to send people your way. Yeah. <laughs> that's amazing. All right. And last question, our favorite. What's one thing you wish you would have known sooner? I can't pick just one. I have three, but I will say them fast. So the first one is how much, if you're going through chronic health struggles, how much mindset affects your healing. Um, I touched on it earlier, but if you don't address your mindset and you're doing all the physical healing stuff, you're never going to get well. Like you, in it's the hardest thing in my standpoint to like, walk through past trauma and stuff like that, but you, you have to deal with it and work through it. So how much mindset affects healing? There also was a book that I read this year called The Rain Barrel Effect, and it kind of pieced everything together for me. I would recommend it to anyone that's dealing with chronic illness or anyone that wants to even learn about basically how and why people get sick. Dr. Stephen Cabral is the one who wrote it, and he's the one that actually taught the integrative health practitioner courses I took. And he basically uses a rain barrel as an analogy. And he said, you know, let's say a storm comes by and it rains a little bit. You're, you're going to look at the rain barrel and not, it wasn't affected, right? But if you have a summer of multiple storms and it rains a lot, you know, that rain is going to continue to get higher and higher until some point it's going to spill over. And he uses that as a visual to disease and chronic illness, you have years and years of exposure to toxins, to chemicals, to standard American diet, inflammation, stress, as it's kind of building up in that rain barrel, you're not probably noticing anything until you get to the top and it starts spilling over, which would be your symptoms. And that's when you're going to get a diagnosis or something like that. So he kind of breaks it down in really good detail of just everything that can contribute to disease and cancer and all those types of things. And I just thought it was so eye opening. And you could also read this book. And I had my, my sweet mother read this book. And she said she had to put it down after the first chapter, because she said I started to get anxious and fearful. So you can you can approach it from two different standpoints of holy crap, like we're bombarded with toxins everywhere. I can't go in. That was my mom. She's like, I feel like I can't go anywhere now and do all this where I read it. And I was like, wow, there's chemicals and toxins and all this stuff around me all the time. I'm going to use this knowledge and empower me. I can't control everything that happens around me, but I can control my home, what I put on my body, what I put in my body, what I'm exposing my ears and my eyes to how I perceive stress and deal with that. So just a little side note, if you feel like you're 
you get overwhelmed by that stuff, maybe don't read it right away. But I think there's a lot of really good takeaways for anyone that's wanting to learn about that. And then the last one is just root cause healing and the proper way to address it. I think I would have saved so much money, you know, on those random protocols I put myself on, like trying to do parasite cleanses and all that. If you're not doing it in the proper order, you're not going to be able to clear whatever it is you're trying to clear. So the roadmap to root cause healing, I wish I would have known sooner as well. Yeah, it makes sense. It's like a, a dog pile and you take it off mm-hmm. one by one is is how my practitioner says. I'm like, yep, yeah. that makes sense. Getting to that root cause. <laughs> so but I love all of those and we'll plug that book mm-hmm. because I want to read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Yes. Well, thank you again, Jenna, so much for being with us today. We appreciate you taking the time to talk us through so many parts of healing. It's a conversation that we don't want to stop having because Mm -hmm. so many people need any information they can get. Yeah. And just to hear that you're not alone. There are people out there that want to help, that can help. You have resources available to you. You just have to use them. Right. In scripture, it says in this life, you will have trouble. Not if, but you will. Um, so I think that really helped my mindset too, of like, Hey, I'm walking through some stuff right now, but it also says the second part of that verse says, but take heart because I have overcome the world. You might be walking through a trial or something like you said, Andrea, you're never alone. And you know, what we're all here for is like eternity. And that's what we're working towards. So if you're walking through something, know that everyone, you know, has to walk through something at some point. So just lean in on your faith and things will get better. Absolutely. You got to get through the IV to get to the gold. That's right. (laughs) Yeah. Well, thank you again so much. I'm so grateful to know you and to give all of our listeners access to you. And as you know, we leave our listeners with a piece of gold. So would you like to share your gold? Yes, I would. And of course it's scripture. The scripture I wanted to share is 2 Corinthians um, chapter 12, verses 9 through 10. And it says, but he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in my weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. This is Gold Ivy signing off. Listen to your truth and go chase your gold.